Hey there, it's Joseph, and welcome back to the YouTube channel dedicated to San Miguel de Allende secrets. And today we're going to talk about how colonial era nuns here in town were portrayed in art to be the flowers in the paradise here on earth. Again, if you need any additional information, there's always links down below in the descriptive box, including links that'll take you out to Amazon.com that have all the best-selling books in the San Miguel de Allende Secrets book series for sale. Gamble into the lobby of the Hotel Real de Minas, cross the courtyard of the Allende Institute, or visit any antique store in town, and you're bound to view paintings of an 18th or 19th century nun wearing a crown of flowers. Who is she? What does she represent? Is she relevant beyond an old-timey subcategory of portraiture? The crown nuns, named for the elaborate floral crowns atop their heads, are accompanied by objects such as candles, a ring, an infant, st infant state of Jesus, and a whole lot of flowers. These lavish portraits were made on the occasion of a nun's profession when she officially entered a cloistered convent, accepting her vows of chastity, obedience, and alike. In colonial Mexico, there are 52 cloistered convents, 22 in Mexico City, 11 in Puebla, 5 in Oaxaca, and others distributed across Mexico, including here in San Miguel de Allende. Nuns were understood to be an integral part of the health of a community, since they prayed on behalf of people to help shorten one's time in purgatory. Nuns lived cloistered in a convent, meaning that once they entered, they did not leave except to create another convent somewhere else. A church was often connected to a convent. Why nuns did not enter it, their presence could be heard or sensed through the grill that lay people could absorb, uh, observe excuse me, while in church, like seen today in the Temple of the Immaculate Conception. Nuns became increasingly important in the 17th and 18th century. The ejection of silver into the economy meant more families acquired wealth, allowing them to pay the dowry needed to permit their daughters, normally the oldest, entry into a convent. A marriage dowry was more expensive than one needed for a convent, so becoming a nun was often a beneficial alternative for a young woman of elite families. While the nuns might never see their families again, many could live a life of comfort inside the convent. Some orders, like here in San Miguel de Allende, had servants, could play music, had libraries to educate themselves. The famous feminist nun, Sor Juana Inez de la Cruz, had a large, exceptional library with scientific instruments at her disposal in Mexico City. Final orders were a marriage of the young nun to Christ, commonly called Bride of Christ. Increasingly, the statue of Jesus, I'm sorry, interestingly, the statue of Jesus as a baby and most crowned nun portraits suggest that the nun will perform the maternal role, becoming at once both bride to Christ and his mother. The infant Jesus also represents the babies the nun would not have. Later, after her death, the baby Jesus often returned to her family, becoming part of the nativity set. A nativity set with multiple baby Jesus images suggests a family tree with many nuns. Portraits of crowned nuns were typically commissioned by the nun's family as the last act of vanity before their daughter joined the convent. The extravagant clothing and flowering paraphernalia was costly, and a portrait like this advertised a family's wealth. Where the flower crowns came from are the indigenous women. They weren't allowed to become nuns until 1724, though they were always present in the convent as servants. It was likely these women taught the Creole and Spanish nuns the Mesoamerican art of making flower garlands and crowns used in paintings. Ancient codices feature Aztec goddesses wearing flower crowns and details on how to make them. Women who entered the convent were said to become dead to the world. Their portraits weren't captured again and again in all their floral finery until they were literally dead. These portraits also functioned as official documents recounting their daughter's lineage. They included lengthy inscriptions noting the name of the nun, her parents' name, and that she was a legitimate daughter, the date of her profession, the name of the convent she entered, and sometimes the date of her death. These portraits visually expressed the popular belief that Spanish America was the site of the new earthly paradise, whose most precious flowers were its virgin nuns. The result was an amplification of the nuns' spiritual supremacy and the projection of a sense of solidarity among Mexicans' nuns, regardless of their religious order or ethnic identity and iconic images. 
Crown nun portraits were exclusive to Mexico, featuring nuns of all type. Over in Spain, only nuns who were abbesses or convent founders got painted. In today's world, Banamex Bank owns the largest collection of crown nun portraits. Now, of course, any woman can enjoy a floral crown, from the Mexican Maria doll to New York's most famous Jewish nanny. Feel free to click the subscribe button below and you'll get notifications all month long.